what AR offers and VR as well, and really sort of most formats, but the metaverse and, and blockchain technology is the ability to scale that both from the perspective of distributing the content and also the connectivity between the artists, between the audiences, between everybody who's coming together for that moment. Break things down and rebuild them in a way that you feel is better every single year. Uh, that's like, I think something that I learned from the team at Coachella, I think it's one of the reasons why Coachella is such a, uh, a worldwide phenomenon. What I wanted to do is kind of ask, initially starting with you, Sam, to kind of define what, what you mean by the metaverse in the context of live events. Is it physical and virtual? And if so, is it a blurring of those two things? Are they separate? Is there an interplay? Yeah, um, I think that, so we kind of think of it, like I said, in these specific verticals. And I think that like, you kind of generalize these verticals enough to for it to make sense across uh, a number of different industries. And so I think that like one of those verticals is shared experiences between online and offline users and events certainly have that happening, right? There's like a lot of people in one physical location and a lot of people around the world who are online interested in what's happening there. Uh, there's digital property rights and financial rights. That's definitely a part of the metaverse. And so NFTs and social tokens are the obvious kind of solutions there. Um, I think there's interactive or like immersive storytelling via 3D content or virtual worlds, Fortnite being a great example, but then also AR content on site at festivals. And I think an opportunity to take some of that AR content and have that also exist in a virtual world for like a cohesiveness across experiences. Um, then there's like community connectivity, collaboration. There's tools that empower creators to like build and earn. Um, all of those things that are, I think very relevant in everybody's idea of the metaverse and also relevant for events. How do you see blockchain, blockchains converge with AR and VR in the context of the metaverse and events? So I think in, first, in terms of in terms of technologies, I want a second to sort of what Sam was saying and we're particularly focused on AR because of that convergence the sort of possibility of bringing the physical and the digital together in one space whether that's in terms of users or content or both um in terms of um sort of how how that how that comes together with the blockchain for us i think what's most important in, in terms of a live event if you think about what makes it live what makes that special why is live itself unique it's that you've got audiences and artists coming together at one moment to create a mo to create a moment that is shared, that is completely unique, only happens at that one time. There's an element of sort of um, vulnerability on the behalf of both the performer and the audience because you're sort of taking a risk in essence in in taking the in sharing in this one moment. What the metaverse offers, what AR offers, and VR as well, and really sort of most formats, but the metaverse and, and blockchain technology is the ability to scale that both from the perspective of distributing the content and also the connectivity between the artists, between the audiences, between everybody who's coming together for that moment. So Tiago, how are you know brands and talent effectively, you know, organizations that have IP, either established IP or they're gonna be producing new IP approaching the metaverse and in particular thinking about the open metaverse so the latter question is the more interesting one and one that i think is still being figured out but the former the first one is is pretty obvious they're being present they're going out there they're building experiences you know and that's particularly for the case of brand but also for the case of IP rights holders and um, talent out there, right? So you mentioned Travis Scott on Fortnite. I would say that there was a um, another moment previous to that, which was Marshmallow on Fortnite, and then previous to that, maybe when uh, when Drake and Ninja did their stream, 
uh, playing Fortnite. And then after that, there's probably, pre previously that, there's another moment. So I think for every person, there's always one moment that's going to be resonating and that's been going on for the last perhaps 10, 20 years in one way, shape or form across different waves of technologies. And if you see the um, most fascinating thing about it is that talent brands have always been present. How did Coachella stay on top of it and filter what's relevant and what you should be reacting to, let alone pioneer stuff? Yeah, I think the the answer is is kind of straightforward, right? It's like doing doing the research, being out there and understanding what's happening in the space and continuing to break things down and rebuild them in a way that you feel is better every single year. Uh, that's like, I think something that I learned from the team at Coachella, I think it's one of the reasons why Coachella is such a, uh, a worldwide phenomenon and a successful brand is because that team is so talented at like, even if something's working well, like how can we make it better? Um, and, and I think part of that is like, when you're thinking about these new technologies and the brands that you want to work with, um, how do you make sure that you are continuously retaining the core essence of what makes Coachella Coachella or any event an event, which is uh, supporting and enabling the connection between the artist and the fan. At the end of the day, that's like what it is all about. Why isn't all of this stuff just gonna get streamed on Web2 platforms like Netflix, Netflix and Amazon Prime? Like, why is this gonna happen on an alternative Web3 platform? I think it's, it comes back to exactly what, what Sam was just saying about the tech serving the actual objective of the art form in the first place and what the, whether it's a festival or whether it's a music artist or a theater company, what they're trying to achieve. And I think that there have been obviously several attempts over the years to bring live performance to mass audiences at varying degrees of success but nothing has really managed to achieve that sort of code <laughs> to go back to that, um, that original point that I made about that moment of connectivity and that sort of more participatory engagement that you have with live performance as an audience member than you do as a sort of spectator of pre-recorded content. I think we just haven't had um, the technology that, create, that can create that, recreate that feeling at a mass scale yet. How does how does Web3 or a kind of Web3 enabled open metaverse change the relationship between creator, audience and fan? Or to what extent does it? A lot has been said about this topic. So, um, you know, I'll keep it brief and touch upon the things that I find more interesting. The relationship is still the same. So the relationship is going to be still you're an artist or you're a fan and right? then you're a fan of that artist um, and you're creating music or art for that community that you hope are your fans so the relationship is still the same and i think the ways that you touch upon that relationship with it the ways that you can engage for that relationship are the ones that are expanding right previously you had a very consumptive base relationship where you are looking at the output of that artist's creation and then saying yeah i'd like to consume that or yeah i'd like to maybe share of it and talk to it talk about it with my friends and uh, the communities i'm a part of now you have perhaps a little bit more of an earlier touch point which is um hey um i actually like what this person has done in the past so why don't i help them do more of that or why don't i uh, become a active supporter uh, financially with, if it's not financial, then with whatever support I could provide of my time and of my effort, of my community gathering efforts. So the, the relationship is the same, but the ways that you are working that relationship are certainly different. What role does gamification play positively in that building of community? Um. So, I mean, as, as I mentioned before, there's this sort of incentivization of, of behaviors. And I think that this is very much connected to what Tiago was just saying in the sense that as an artist, you always want to sort of um, mobilize your audience, your fan base to support you, however that might 
they may be able to, whether that's financially or through purchasing records or through bringing their friends into your community, whatever that is. But that's always been very transactional. I think to, to use like a real world example, if you're, if you're performing at a gig and you want the audience up on their feet, you want them at the front, you want them dancing, they kind of, they, they need to take a risk in order to do that. Um, and you don't really have very many ways currently of encouraging that behavior. Whereas in the, meta, in the metaverse, you can use gamification to incentivize increased interaction and engagement. So your audiences know that the more they interact with the experience, perhaps more tokens they'll earn to spend on merch or something along those lines. It's, it's a risk in a, as an audience member to, to participate and you're making that risk more appealing because they're sharing in the benefits of it. Um, it's kind of, it's, it's sort of, yeah, community building and, and participatory engagement that benefits everybody as opposed to creating a sort of transactional um, system that we have now with sort of, you know, you pay an influencer to promote you or whatever that might be. It's just a lot more, yeah, grassroots, a lot more authentic and meaningful, I think. And I think, I guess this is how people can participate in the value creation. And if that's somehow atomized IP and NFTs, you can see with the Board 8 Yacht Club, the success of that, the idea that mm. people can have a stake, um, a particular slice of the IP, um, they can add value to it, launching a coffee shop, their own merch, creating a character, launching a band, um, using these characters that um, allows them to monetize it in one way, but at the same time adds value for the whole. 